So let's suppose we have a certain container and inside that container we have a carbonyl compound and that carbonyl compound is optically active. So that basically means that one of the carbons inside that carbonyl compound is chiral. So let's suppose that the alpha carbon is chiral and the alpha carbon contains one H atom. So that basically means our carbonyl compound will be able to rotate plain polarized light. So let's suppose that this is the molecule that we're talking about. This is one example of a carbonyl compound that is capable of rotating plain polarized light. Now this carbon, which is the alpha carbon, contains one H atom and it also is the chiral carbon. Now when our carbonyl compound undergoes the enol reaction in which it forms the enol, as soon as the enol is formed, the reverse reaction will begin to take place and we're going to reform our carbonyl reactant, our carbonyl compound. Now when the reverse reaction takes place, we're not only going to form one type of enantiomer, we're going to form both types of enantiomers. So if we begin with the R enantiomer and, and initially we only have the R enantiomer, eventually when the reaction takes place and equilibrium is achieved between the carbonyl and the enol product, we'll form the S and the R enantiomers. So we're going to have a racemic mixture and the racemic mixture will not rotate plane polarized light. So it will not be optically active. So basically as long as carbonyl compounds have an alpha hydrogen, as in this case we have the alpha hydrogen, they can undergo enol reactions and eventually will equilibrate between the enol product and the carbonyl reactant. And in such a case, optical activity will be lost as long as this alpha carbon is the chiral carbon and this alpha carbon contains one hydrogen atom. So it has one alpha hydrogen. So the question is, why does this take place? Why do we have racemization reaction taking place when our enol is produced? Well, to answer this question, we have to take a look at the reaction mechanism. Now, there are two conditions under which this enol reaction takes place. We either have the base catalyzed racemization reaction or the acid catalyzed racemization version. In this lecture, we're going to focus only on the base catalyzed reaction. We're not going to look at the acid catalyzed reaction because it's basically the same exact thing. So let's begin with our initial reactant. Let's suppose inside that container, we only have this reactant. Our reaction has not taken place. So we only have the R enantiomer. Now into that container, we add our base catalyzed reagent. We add our hydroxide. The hydroxide, we will basically take off this H atom that is attached to our alpha carbon. This is the alpha hydrogen atom. So once this is taken off, we produce the water molecule as well as the resonance stabilized enolate as shown. In the second step, when we actually form the enol, this water molecule basically protonates this oxygen, places the H atom on the oxygen, and we form this enol and we reform our base molecule, this hydroxide. Now as soon as the enol is formed, we begin the reverse reaction. Now in the reverse reaction, what happens is this same base, the hydroxide, takes away the H and we form this molecule. Once again, we form the enolate. So we have these two resonance stabilized structures. 
Now, in the final step, to basically reform our reactant, the carbonyl compound, what happens is the lone pair of electrons on the carbon, this carbon, basically grab an H atom from the water molecule that is formed in this step. So when this hydroxide grabs the H, we form the water molecule. Now the thing that we have to notice is this open carboanion, this carbon, contains two lobes. And either the top lobe or the bottom lobe of this orbital of the carbon can basically grab our H atom off of that water. Remember, this orbital basically represents the probability of finding our two electrons. So the electrons can be found in this orbital or they can be also found in this bottom green orbital. So basically, if our pathway is via this pathway, if the electrons are, are found on this side of our orbital, then they grab our H atom and they form a bond with the H atom from the top and that will push down these two groups, the methyl and ethyl group, downward and we form this molecule which is our R enantiomer. But if at that moment in time, the electrons are instead found in the bottom lobe of the 2p orbital of the carbon, then the bond is formed from the bottom and the H is grabbed from the bottom and these two groups, the methyl ethyl groups, are pushed upward when the bond is formed from the bottom. So in this case, instead of forming the R enantiomer, we form the S enantiomer. Now, because the electrons have equal probability of being found on top lobe and on the bottom lobe, that means pathway 1 and pathway 2, where this is pathway 1 and pathway 2, are just as likely to take place. They're equally likely to take place. And so that means we produce equal amounts of R and equal amount of S enantiomer. And this is known as a a racemic mixture. So this racemic mixture will not rotate plane polarized light. Well actually it will, but what will happen is the following. The R enantiomer will rotate light a certain degree measure in one direction and the S enantiomer will then rotate that same light an equal measure but in the opposite direction. So the net result is no rotation of plain polarized light because we have equal amount of both enantiomers. We have a racemic mixture. So in the base catalyzed version of the racemization reaction of the carbonyl compound, we see that the electrons on the carbon are just as likely to grab the H atom from the top as they are to grab it from the bottom. So at the end we produce equal amounts of both enantiomers and so optical activity is lost. Now the same exact result, result can be obtained if instead we use the base catalyzed racemization version. Now we're not going to go into detail about that uh, on that reaction because it's exactly the same. So, once again, this racemization reaction only takes place as long as our carbonyl compound has the chiral carbon on the alpha position and this alpha carbon contains one H atom. Only then will our racemization reaction take place.